It's Lou, and we're here to discuss a timeline, and uh, it's going to make you kind of wonder what happened, you know, but uh, some of this stuff is going to be pretty humorous now in the context of modern society, but anyway, the controller has been getting away with a lot of stuff, and the origin of these lies has to be exposed, and that's what Nazarene do. We tear down strongholds false reasoning that you know that's why we're here the not Serene search team and uh, there's another one of these coming out I hope you see it we uh, we, we can't keep doing the shirts uh, forever so we thought we'd get something that people could sew something onto their hat or their shirt or their jacket or you know glue it to your suitcase whatever <laughs> it's a really neat fabric badge and I, I try to wear them because I, it reminds everybody that uh, we're not serene. See, Paul was called a ringleader of the sect of the not serene at Acts 24, verse 5. Now, does that, that's, that implies that there's a circus going on somewhere, a, uh, a ringleader. Well, we're not, uh, the ring, he wasn't the ringleader of the sect of the Pentecostals or the Baptists or the Catholics or whatever denomination there is, but we are not serene. That's what we are. It means branches, or it can mean watchmen. It means both. There's a Hebrew word depending on the context. But we were forecasted or predicted to exist in the book of Yirmiyahu or Jeremiah 31 at verse 6, that Nazarim would rise on the hills of Aphraim, not Yehuda, and cry out in the last days. It's happening. I've got the timeline in this book, Truth or Tradition, and I've got the timeline that we're going to discuss in this book, The Strong Delusion, and I've got it in my first book, which is now 365 pages. What? It's like an encyclopedic reference for weird lies that we've inherited. But, uh, and it's also an e-book on, e on Amazon. You can get that in seconds. So uh, I'd rather read it off the screen. This timeline is disturbing, really. Uh, let me see if I can pull that up here. Ah, well, first I want to start off with Daniel 12 because it predicts the last days, the end times. At that time, Michael, the great prince who protects your people, will arise and there will be a time of distress. What would that be? time of distress. Does that remind you of Matthew or Matthew chapter 24? Uh, tw chapter 24. Yeah, around verse you know, 20. In the time of distress. Well, there's going to be a time of distress. It's predicted in Daniel. Such as has not happened from the beginning of nations until then. But at that time, your people, everyone whose name is found written in the book, will be delivered Oh, there's a deliverer. Huh. Isn't that what Yahushua means? I am your deliverer. Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to everlasting life, and others to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens, and those who lead many to obedience, like the stars forever and ever. But you, Daniel, Roll up and seal the words of the scroll until the time of the end. And many shall go here and there to increase knowledge. And in this time of distress, knowledge is going to be increased. Knowledge of what? Well, some of us understand. Some have understanding. And we're here to announce the soon coming of Yahushua. Now, the, the, the next page I want to address is a timeline that you can look up and watch anytime you want. And here's one of the ways. You don't have to buy a book. You can look at it online for free. If you put in the word fossilized, then a space, and then customs, and then another space, and then put this in, what does that say? Beast timeline dot HTML. You can slow this down and look at the lettering and read it. It, it's it's one big word, beast timeline dot html. 
and you can read these this timeline that I'm about to read to you. We're going to start in CE or AD 300. Full immersion was changed to a fusion, which is a sprinkling or a spray. And in the same year, prayers to the dead or necromancy, a form of divination, which is against Deuteronomy 18.11 and Yashiyahu 8.19. In the year 310, the making the sign of the cross on your body, you know. And what you're really doing is you're making an upside down one. It's really odd. But you wouldn't want to do that. That's the symbol of the sun deity, the Romans and the Persians and the Babylonians. That's a sun sign, which was adopted later by Constantine, too. During the time of Constantine, the sign of the crux was officially the sign of Christianity. In 325, death was decreed to anyone who adds or changes the creed of the belief of Nice, Nicaea, in 325. That's the, so many things went sideways on in that year. And it was enforced under penalty of death. They were pronounced anathema. Anybody who changed or added or didn't believe the creed that was the, the creed of Nicaea. See years 1545 and year 1560 and you'll find that that uh, creed was changed. And, the, and here's another thing that happened in 325. E-A-S-T-E-R was established at Nicaea. Now that's the name of the Earth Mother, the Mother of Harlots. Actually, they, they now call it Resurrection Sunday to get people away from that word. In 370, the Council of Laodicea, but uh, they call Shabbat observers Judaizers. And what's wrong with that? Yehusha observed Shabbat. And, uh, and they could commit, pronounce them worthy of death, the death penalty for observing Shabbat, the seventh day of the week is the day of rest. This council refers to Shabbat as distinct from the Lord's Day, which is B-E-L's Day. That's, you know, Ravi Varad in the Hindu thing. And it's the Day of the Sun. They adopted that. And then in 375, veneration of angels and dead saints. Veneration means worship. Okay, uh, that might be bad. Let's see, that was 370, yeah. <clears throat> All right, in CE or AD 394, the institution of the sacrament of the Mass. Now that's got lots of problems with it because there are no sacraments. They're the things that are the means of control over the nobility and the people had to come too. Because see, the, oh, you can't have the sacrament. Oh, the Eucharist is the sacrament that they're worried about not receiving. Because they, if they, you, if you, if a noble was cut off from receiving a sac the sacrament, then it was it was like the worst thing. It was like the death penalty spiritually. Excommunication was another way of controlling the nobility. So anyway, the these dogmas were all a system of control. There is no sacraments. That's not written anywhere. So uh, what is a mass? Well, uh, <laughs> missa recitata, low mass, priest plus one. Missa Cantata Sung Mass, Priest plus one. Missa Solemnus High Mass, Priest plus two. Missa Pontificalis, Bishop plus Priest plus two. Plus, or as many as you want. Anyway, <laughs> what's that? I'm sorry. Mm. Uh, that's not in Scripture. I mean, what does that mean? Mass means to depart, you know, Missa. CE 431, the worship of Miriam. They were worshiping someone here, a dead girl that spoke Hebrew. The veneration is worship. In 431, the same year, Miriam is proclaimed the queen of heaven. Where have we read that? The worship of the queen of heaven, baking cakes for the queen of heaven. You can look that up. It might be that. 
And that, of course, that's uh, it's against Matthew one twenty five and Mark six verse three and yeah, who can enter John two verses two through four. And in CE four thirty one, Miriam is pronounced the mediatrix against First Timothy two five and yeah, who can enter eleven twenty eight. In the year five hundred, the priestcraft, which of course are just made up. I, the uh, priestcraft began to dress in priestly garb. Okay, Gar not garbage, but priestly clothing to make themselves distinct. Most of it was Hindu stuff, you know, stoles and little, you know, I don't know, rugs with cruxes on them. I used to see it all the time. I was raised in it. And uh, it was pretty scary. And then the sacrament of extreme unction. That sounds pretty extreme. That's uh, another sacrament that doesn't really exist. But people believe that it, you know priests can get you out of purgatory or some place that doesn't exist by praying over you as you're dying or after you've died. Now then there's the year 593, the doctrine of purgatory, which is against Yehuchanan 524, first Yehuchanan 1, 7 through 9, and 2, 1 and 2, and Romans 8, verse 1. There is no condemnation for the people of Yahuwah who are in Yahusha. I, I want to stop and say, well, first of all, this, this is all basically building up to an idea that the apostles taught these things, and they didn't. The apostles were the emissaries, the ones that were close followers of Yahusha. There were, there were thousands of many, many more thousands of Nazarene, but the inner group, there were 12. And one of them killed himself, and his bowels were spread out all over the ground when he hung himself. And his, he was replaced in the Acts. So we've got uh, 12 disciples that were f close followers. But apostolic succession is one of the core doctrines of this circuit. The control was to restore power to the papacy and keep it there through a, a doctrine called apostolic succession. And that doctrine was to keep the power in the head. The, 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 there was a deadly wound that struck the head when the nobility turned away from him as the head. But the idea that a man could not be married developed into, into what we call celibacy to keep the children from inheriting the authority of their father and that way the, pa the papacy would hold that. And that was what celibacy was all about. It was really a, a control mechanism that was built into the circus. I mean, it's only logical. <laughs> There's no way. I mean, all the, the apostles were married people, you know, and they didn't divorce their wives. Well, anyway, here we go. In the year 600, Latin was the language and the only language permitted for prayer. And this is against 1 Corinthians 14, verse 9. In the year 709, kissing the feet of the Pope is ordered against Acts 10, 25 and 26 and Revelation 19, and verse 10, and 22, verse 8 and 9. Kissing the feet of Pope, the Pope. Temporal power, in the year 750, temporal power of the Pope is declared. Temporal power of the Pope. Okay, he's in charge of all the nobility and all the kings of the earth. That sounds familiar because Yahushua was offered all the authority on earth by the adversary, who was the ruler of this world at that time and still is at this moment because, you know, the world is messed up. Now, temporal power of the Pope, what? Well, that's against Matthew 4, 8 and 9, and Matthew 20, 25 and 26. I'm saying Matthew, but his real name is Matthew. Now, what happened after 750? In 754, the Council of Constantinople ordered the removal of all images and abolition or abolition of image worship. So they were worshiping image. They were doing the Hindu thing with candles in front of the statues and lighting candles. And that's what the Hindus have always done. And they bowed down to images. Of course, the, when I say Hindus, I mean the Nimrod thing. You know, that's what they do. They 
And that, that's why the first commandment and the second commandment were instituted. Have no other before my face. I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. And you do not bow to images. Now in 785, Miriam is pronounced co-redemptrix, and that's against Acts 4.12 and Psalm 146.5 and Hebrews 7, verse 25. Co-redemptrix. She's a co-redeemer. Uh-oh. Now, in the year 788, Miriam worship is pronounced. And that is certainly against Romans 125. Well, let's not forget the commandment itself. You don't bow to images or worship anyone but him. And that's what they're doing. You're worshiping a, a dead person. That's kind of like from the ancestor worship, you know, of the Hindus or Buddhists. In the year 788, the worship of the Kruks, relics, that's dead pieces of people's bodies, and images of reauthorized, no, images are reauthorized so that you can worship images again. Well, there it goes. It just changed the dogma. So, uh, and that, of course, is against Deuteronomy 12, Deuteronomy 18, Psalm 115, and Exodus 20, verse 4. Okay. In the year 850, fabrication and use of holy water. Holy water. Now that comes from the idea of the Hindu Ganges River. It was considered a spirit being and any, anybody that was sprinkled with that water, well, you know, they were cured or blessed. Now that's our, an adopted thing from the Ganges River. But in CE or AD 890, the veneration of Saint Yusuf, the husband of Miriam. Okay, well, now watch this. In, in the year uh, 965, they started baptizing bells, okay? Ceremony of baptizing bells to ward off demons and to call the elect to vespers when blessed bells are rung. How do you know if they're blessed bells? Whoa, I don't know. Uh, we don't bless bells. We don't care about bells. Just forget them. But anyway, there it is. In 995, yeah, 995, the canonization of dead saints, which is against Romans 1 verse 7 and 1 Corinthians 1 and 2. In the year 998, fasting on Yom Shishi every day, they call it the F day, we call it Fufu day, or just a, at when we're out, but we call it Yom Shishi, it's, the, it's day six. Fasting from meat and during Lent, they, they set this up in 998. Fasting on that day of the week from, from meat. Now this is against Matthew 15, 11, and 1 Corinthians 10, 25, and 1 Timothy 4, verses 1 through 8. Now, here we go. In the year 1079, that's the year 1079, the celibacy of the priestcraft is declared. And that means the married, and that and married priests were ordered to cast off their wives. Against 1 Timothy 3, verses 2 through 5, and 1 Timothy 3, verses 1, 12, 3, 12, and Matthew 8, verse 13, uh, 14 and 15. In the year 1090, the institution of rosary beads, or chaplets, which is against Matthew 6, verse 7, Deuteronomy 18, verses 10 and 11, and Yahshua Yahu, or Isaiah 8, verses 19, uh, verse 19. Well, that's divination, is what that is. It's contact, it's necromancy, certainly. Talking to dead people. There's dead people involved in the prayer beads. Also, Buddhism, Shinto, and Islam practice prayer bead counting. They have their own prayer beads, and that's where they got them. Originally, they were uh, S-H-I-V-A beads, the tears of that deity of the Hindu trinity, the destroyer. He has a little moon, a crescent moon, uh, usually associated with his head, and beads. In the year 1190, 
practice the sale of indulgences against Ephesians 2 verses 8 through 10. For those of you who don't know, this was a practice of people paying the clergy to have punishment time taken off from burning in purgatory after their death. Eating meat on F day or Fufu day was a mortal sin. So you can't buy an indulgence for doing that. It's if you can't afford buying an indulgence for that, then it's straight to hell for you, according to their doctrine. Now, these are doctrines you've got to believe. These come from the Catholic Encyclopedia, so I'm not making this up. In the year 1215, the dogma of transubstantiation, that's where they change bowling balls into golf balls. No, no, they take, they take bread and they say something over it. They say these words over the bread and it, it translates into this is my body. Okay, the priest represents Yahusha to them. They don't call him that. But, and then he pronounces this is my body over this bread and that's it. It turns into him. And then they feed it to people. Now this is declared in the year 1215. And it's against Luke 22, verses 19 and 20, Mark 13, verse 21, and Yehuchanan, chapter 6, verse 35, Matthew 24, 23 to 28, 1 Corinthians 11, 26. Many were burned at the stake for rejecting this. Okay, so murder, murdering people, that's what was happening. They were doing the burning at the stake thing. It was not Yahushua's heart in them causing them to kill people over believing that he was in the bread. But it was their way of exterminating all who would resist their powerful authority to teach. A teaching authority that had run into complete apostasy. Now, in that same year, 1215, confession of sins to a priest is ordered which is against Psalm 51, verses 1 through 10, and Luke 7, 48, and Luke 15, 21, and 1 Yehuchanan 1, verses 8 and 9. In the year 1220, adoration of the wafer, or the host, matzah worship is what it is. And that's against Exodus 20, verse 4, and, Ye and Yehuchanan 4, verse 24. In the year 1229, scriptures are forbidden to lay men, not ordained people, regular people, against Yehuchanan 539 and Yehuchanan 831 and 2 Timothy 3, verses 15 through 17. In the year 1265, Miriam's house, moved by an angel, to Lorento, Italy. Now, as fishy as this sounds, I don't think they violated Torah. Unless they were lying. What do you think? Now, watch this. In the year 1285, scapular protection is decreed. That's a brown cloth or a talisman with a picture of the Virgin packed with tea leaves proclaimed to contain supernatural powers and virtues to protect the wearer. Hmm. In the year 1414, the chalice is forbidden to laity at communion, which is a radical distortion of the Passover, actually, the Passover Seder. The annual remembrance of Yahushua's death. You only do that once a year. You don't do it whenever you want. And then you do it in your home. You don't do it somewhere out in public. I mean, they, what would happen if they, if the first Passover in Mitzrayim or Egypt was uh, a, a giant gathering? You know, they did it in their houses. You know, but they ignore they ignore the facts. They make this stuff up. Now watch this. Oh boy, <laughs> here we go. In the year 1439, 
the dogma of seven sacraments, which is against Matthew 28 and 26. Well, and then uh, in the year 1439, purgatory is decreed valid dogma which is against Matthew 25, verse 46, and Luke 23, 43. In the year 1508, Miriam is pronounced to be the mother of G-O-D. And that's against Matthew, Matthew 12, verse 46 through 50, and Luke 8, 19 through 21, and Acts 1, verse 14. In CE 1545, the church or circus tradition is equal to scripture. Church, so, so the circus, whatever they say, is equal to scripture. And they're able to alter scripture as they see fit, which is a decree, it's a dogma. And it's against Matthew 15, 6, and Mark 7, 7 through 13, Colossians 2 through 8 or 2, verse 8. Also, it adds many other dogma to the Council of Nice, or Nice. In, in the year 1560, the creed of the Pope Pius IV is decreed, which is against Galatians 1, verse 8. In the year 1580, the Pope is declared to be L-O-R-D G-O-D. That ought to be just about enough to get some people roasted. Now, Yahuwah did not allow his esteem to go to another. Just watch, read Yahshiyahu or Isaiah 48, of verse 11. <clears throat> okay, the, the Pope, whoever it might be, is declared L-O-R-D, G-O-D. In the year 1593, the Ave Maria, is adopted, which means Hail Marian, or Miriam. In the year 1710, 1710, a stuffed donkey in Verona, Italy, at the circus of the Madonna of the Organs, is decreed to be the actual animal the Yahushua HaMashiach entered Jerusalem on. Visiting it will gain indulgences in now we've got circus animals for the circus. When I first heard that, when I first read it, I couldn't stop laughing for almost 10 minutes. In the year 1854, wow, that was just a couple of decades before my grandmother was born, a new dogma was, it was established called the Immaculate Conception of the Virgin Miriam which is against Romans 3, verse 23, and Romans 5, verse 12, and it's against Psalm 51, verse 5, and it's against Yermiyahu, or Jeremiah, 17, verse 9. She was declared to be immaculate from birth. She had no sins, according to them. Now, she called herself a sinner <clears throat> in the Magnificat, remember? They call it. Now in CE 1864, Miriam is pronounced officially sinless, which is against Luke 1, 46 and 47, Romans 3, verse 10 through 19, and 23. Now, in the year 1870, 20 years before James Strong published the King James Concordance, Concordance. The King James Version is the source of the King of, of James Strong's Concordance. But uh, 20 years before that, in 1870, the papal infallibility is decreed. He can't make any false statements at all in church or circus dogma, in teaching. Yeah, we're not, okay. That's again, 2 Thessalonians 2, verses 2 through 12, and Revelation 17, verses 1 through 9, and Revelation 13, 5 through 8, and of course, Revelation 18. He's infallible, according to them. Now, in the year 1907, that's just a little over 100 years from now, from, from where we're at now, 100 years back, 1907, 
all sciences are condemned. Now, science is the Latin word skier, which means the search for truth. And the word comes from the Latin itself. I've got a book, and it's, uh, it's called Truth or Tradition. And uh, in this book, the truth is the word. That's the only source of truth, the word of you, uh, not tradition. But that's all this is, is tradition. Now in 1907, again, 1922, that's uh, 98 years ago as I make this video. It's the year 2020 right now. So in, in 1922, the Pope is declared to be J-E-S-U-S -S Christ. In 1930, all public schools are condemned. In 1950, that was the year I was born, the declaration of the bodily assumption of the Virgin Miriam into heaven. So she's not here anymore. That's, that's what they say. She was assumed into heaven. That's what the assumption is. But it's a belief. It's a dogma. Okay, in the year 2008, the name Yahuwah, or the, any form of the transliteration of the Tetragrammaton, is outlawed. It's forbidden in liturgy, singing, or worship. You can't say the name. All you can do is substitute Dominus, or Curios, or Adonai, or any other word, L-O-R-D. In the year 2014, following Pope Francis, on Twitter, gains indulgences. That's a dogma. Okay, you cannot remain a Catholic if you don't believe these dogmas. All right, I'm going to cut this short because this has really gotten long. So, um, this isn't to make fun of people, but it is to expose some of the silliness that we have out there. Arguments and silliness and activities that are baseless. And some of this is going to be worthless to Yahushua when we meet him. Not to make, we don't want to make fun of people though. Sorry I even mentioned that man's name, but that's not really his name. His name isn't Pope Francis. It's, it's just one thing after another. Well, you all enjoy the day, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye.